We all know and love Emma Stone, whether it's from La La Land, Zombie Land, any of the lands. She's done comedy, drama, sports, crime, and today I'm looking at every single film she's ever been in. I'm gonna rank the movies, her performances, tell you what to watch, what you can skip, and we'll see just how her career evolves throughout the years. Stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. You know, extra drinks for the party, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really nice. I don't think I've ever done anything that nice. What an incredible start to this filmography. Most actors are lucky enough to have a solid film or even a good film as their first film, but very few actors can say that their first film is a timeless classic. For those who don't know, the film stars Jonah Hill and Michael Sarah as two high school seniors who are trying to get laid. Emma Stone playing the girl Jonah Hill's character likes. It's a simple concept for a movie, but the execution is just near perfect. It's hilarious, crazy, and even has some heart when it needs to. Emma Stone isn't in the movie a ton, but she's good when she is. She's a pretty good and normal person in the film, kind of serving as the straight man or woman in this thing, only because everyone else in this movie is eccentric. Still a really good movie and a insane first film for Emma Stone. While it did take some more time for Emma Stone to become the lead of a film, the jump in screen time starts here and more or less continues as the film goes on. All right, and that is why you are in this band, and they are not, because you have looks and personality. Which takes us to her second film, The Rocker. The film follows Rain Wilson, who's in this big, up-and-coming band, who's all but guaranteed to make it big. The only problem, they kick him out forcing Fish, that's right, that's his name, to live a boring and mundane life while his friends make it big time. But many years later, get this, he joins his nephew's band in hopes of helping them make a name for themselves, including bass player Emma Stone. She plays a girl named Amelie in this movie and stands out for being one of the more likable characters. And while I normally didn't find Fish a likable lead, he has a few moments with all the kids that give them some more depth, and I only wish that the film kind of did more of this. The one scene of Amelie talking to him before the photo shoot, it's one of the better ones, I'll say that. Both actors do a great job. It's still a small role, but Emma Stone's gonna do what Emma Stone does, and that's act well. Well, I don't know if you guys can recognize this, but Shelly is meeting guys. How did they come up with the premise for this film? Anna Ferris is a playboy model who gets kicked out of the mansion and decides to mentor a struggling sorority because they need some more pledges. Honestly, you might think it sounds like a stupid premise, but I'ma say it, not that bad. It is a simple movie. It doesn't try to do too much, and it's a decent enough comedy because the actors are good. Emma Stone plays the lead of the sorority, and again, her screen time continues to grow easily like the second main character of this thing. Her and Anna Faris carry the movie, and huge props to Anna Faris, because I think this character of Shelly played the wrong way is a horrible lead, but Anna Faris crushes it. She's a crazy and, like, cartoonish but fun character. Shelly teaches the girls about confidence, and the girls teach Shelly that she's more than her looks. Again, it's simple but well done. When you look back at this era of comedy films, there are some really bad ones. And while this isn't a trendsetter, it's not a must watch, it's definitely not one of the bad ones. Now we're in 1982, which is of course the summer of your first relationship. Holy Christmas Carol, Batman. Ah, a Christmas Carol, you know, one of the most beloved stories of all time. But how do we make it fresh? Hmm, Jim Carrey? Nah, Muppets? Nah, that's dumb. How about Matthew McConaughey? Get this, he's visited by the ghost of his ex-girlfriends on the path to find love. No, they're not, they're not real ghosts, they're not dead. That would be crazy though, they should have done that. In this film, McConaughey is a Barney Stinson-esque character who would never settle down with one woman. Ew, that's lame. But at his brother's wedding, he's visited by three visions of his exes who help him realize maybe love's kinda nice. Our ghost of girlfriend's past being played by, you guessed it, Emma Stone. Here she plays our lead Connor's first girlfriend. She's young and energetic, a little immature, and easily the most memorable ghost Connor meets. Mainly because all the other ghosts are like real characters in the story, so like, we see them as ghosts and then we see them in the actual plot while it's going on. It's kind of strange. The rest of the movie, not for me, but not a horrible film, just forgettable. The performances are pretty solid though and that's nice and there are some good moments. That's about it though, moving on. And then she was, um, and then she was gone.
When I say grown man hanging out with child, you think, whoa, 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 buddy, let's call the cops. And I say, it's not what it looks like. Paper Man is a movie that kind of surprised me, mainly because Rotten Tomatoes said it was horrible. The premise is a writer stuck with writer's block, battling a failing marriage. He befriends a teen who's also in a bad relationship, and they kind of just kick it. First of all, the vibe of this movie is awesome. That fall aesthetic, it goes crazy. And the soundtrack by Mark McAdam is awesome. I've been listening to it ever since. The whole movie hinges around this sort of odd relationship, and I think the movie really works because Jeff Daniels and Emma Stone are really good. The simplicity of the story, I think, is what makes it work. The film has some light moments, but also some more serious moments that let the characters get into their trauma, both of these things that they're dealing with. This is the first film that really gives Emma Stone the chance to dramatic act at length, and she absolutely crushes it. You can see the talent. One of the more underrated performances of her career, that monologue at like the diner, come on. There's also this subplot with Ryan Reynolds as Richard's imaginary friend that isn't explored to its fullest extent. Kind of a strange B story, but I do like the idea of Kieran Culkin's character. If anything, have Ryan Reynolds here just to justify this character. Not everything in the film works, but honestly, I like this one. And I think it's important in Emma Stone's filmography as the first time she really hits these dramatic scenes. And she's second build. That's pretty cool. Here's the deal. Girls want romance. You know, mystery. This is my third filmography watch through, right? And sometimes I get these really cool movies I've never heard of. And other times I get Marmaduke. Remember when we as a society had that phase where movies like the animals were played by like animals or like they looked like animals? Well, this is one of those not amazing. Pretty much Owen Wilson is Marmaduke, a dog that moves to a new city and goes through all this hot and spicy dog drama. There's a bully dog and a popular dog. Emma Stone's good at delivering her lines, but even then it's hard to connect with this character because I have to just look at this dog that's not particularly keen on showing emotion. You don't really need to watch it. In fact, I'd say there are better kids movies in this filmography that are a lot more worth your time. I really didn't mean for the lie to put me on the map, but I gotta admit, I kinda liked being on the map. This is actually the movie that inspired me to make this video. I watched it about a month ago and was like, damn, Emma Stone is always a win. I need to watch all of her movies. Another important film for Emma Stone is it's the first time she is the one and only lead in the film. And damn, does she carry it. It's the story of Olive who lets the guys at her school claim to have done some dirty things with her in exchange for some money. And man, dude, Emma Stone rock in this movie. The film has some laughs for sure, but also a lot of heart. And I think a huge part of that is just because of how good this lead performance is. The relationship between her and Thomas Hayden Church is great in this movie, and I love these kind of unconventional friendships we see in this and Paper Man. It really paves the way for a lot of great examples of this we see in films like Edge of 17. I'm really sorry. We missed your body as a wonderland. Okay, only one song. That's not so bad, right? Do your research, people. Don't be like me. I look up every Emma Stone movie made. This one pops up. I look it up. Yeah, there she is. She's in the first five minutes of the movie, says two lines, and then leaves. She delivers those two lines pretty good, I guess. And the movie's not bad, but that's about all I got. Not gonna rank this one. Let's move on. What are you, lawyer? A little bit. Come on. I know. You on? Is she? Gonna be. This is an epic movie. Also important because it's the first collaboration between Emma Stone and maybe her most epic scene partner, Ryan freaking Gosling. That's right, you thought it was just La La Land? Well, my child, you couldn't be more wrong. You got this one and even one more coming up. Hmm, I wonder. If you don't like rom-coms, I'd still say watch this one, it might be the one for you. And I really like this movie. The movie stars Steve Carell, another middle-aged man going through a divorce, but unlike Richard from Paper Man that says, hey, let me go hang out with the youth, you know? He says, let me team up with Ryan Gosling and maybe learn some things about getting the ladies. I don't want to reveal how Emma Stone plays into this dynamic because it's kind of a spoiler, but she's pretty good in this film. You can see even here that her and Ryan Gosling make a great pair because they got the chemistry and when you team that up with with good writing, it's hard to miss. And this movie does not miss, it's great. Awesome scene after awesome scene, laugh after laugh, maybe peak Emma Stone rom-com, just saying. Putting this one at number six. Uh, let's begin with, uh, with where you were born. So I watched The Help and I really liked it, but then I found out the cast doesn't like it because of the white savior complex, and I kind of get it. But if we're not talking about that and we're just talking about the movie itself, it's pretty good. Maybe because it's a powerhouse 
of actresses giving incredible performances. It's like the Avengers of freaking actresses. It's insane. You got Emma Stone, Viola Davis, Octavia Spencer, Jessica Chastain, and then Bryce Dallas Howard plays a pretty damn good villain in this film as like top 10 racist who I hate. Honestly, with a cast like this, it's hard for this movie not to work. Just throw any given pair of these actresses on screen and it's magic. The story is about a girl named Skater who starts interviewing black maids about their jobs and the many injustices they have to deal with, but obviously they'd get in a lot of trouble if they found out, so it's on the down low. It's really one of the first big dramas Emma Stone gets thrown her way, and I'd say it's a big success. Outside of the facts, like I said, a lot of people don't like it. High quality stuff, Emma Stone is fantastic, as is every other actress in this film. They all do phenomenal work. Nothing you mention it. Take your weapons, your car keys, your ammunition. Zombieland is another really fun one. Follows the story of four strangers trying to survive in the zombie apocalypse. Pretty simple concept, but the way it's presented and the characters we follow, it just makes it a really good time. And that's what makes Zombieland unique. It's not really focused at all on the horror like most zombie projects. It's really just comedy. Jesse Eisenberg and Woody Harrelson are our leads in this thing. Eisenberg's character, Columbus, providing rules to the apocalypse, which serves as the film's best comedy bit. Emma Stone plays Wichita, one half of the sister duo our boys team up with. And while I don't think the film utilizes her insane comedy talents enough in this film, it's fine because she's not like a big comic relief character here. She's kind of more of a straight man, you know? We also get some really nice moments between her and Columbus as well as her sister. Their whole goal of going to this amusement park being incredibly wholesome and kind of relatable, although, I mean, let's be honest, you didn't really think that one through, did you? Really good movie. I'm sure it won't take long for a sequel, turning a huge profit at the box office, right? It's not like it's gonna take 10 years or anything crazy like that. Should be happening right about... <laughs> Time for Spider-Man. Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy is the best love interest of all time when it comes to the superhero genre, and I'm standing on that with the firmest of feet. Her and fellow filmography I've watched Andrew Garfield are so good together, it carries the whole entire second movie. What I like about Gwen in this movie is the fact that she's likable and a great companion to Peter, but also a capable and not just damsel in distress character in addition to that. Even when she has to be saved by Peter, it never feels cliche. Never like she stops being her own character only to serve Peter's story. She helps him in completely other facets as a character. Her relationship with Captain Stacy is another highlight. She just makes this character feel so real. It's a nice change of pace from Mary Jane in Toby franchise and honestly I love everything about this character in the movie and just like I said this movie's awesome and once again fight me in the comments if you disagree but I'm right best superhero love interest of all time it's not even close in my opinion I hate spamming multiverse stuff and Sony doesn't have the best track record for individual movies but Emma Stone as Spider-Gwen at some point even if it's a cameo it has to happen I'm Jerry say Jerry I bet you got a ducky war story behind that lighter yeah, sure, I got stories. Round two of Emma Stone, Ryan Gosling, dynamic duo team up extravaganza. Unfortunately, Gangster Squad is the weakest of the group, despite having a pretty stacked cast. In addition to Stone and Gosling, you got Josh Brolin as the lead, Anthony Mackie, Michael Pena. The film looks good, and I like the sort of Romeo Juliet type romance between our duo, but unfortunately, the rest of the movie struggles to hit those strong, memorable notes. The film has some really bad reviews, but I don't think it's that bad. Kind of just generic gangster movie, elevated by some pretty good performances. Emma Stone plays the partner of main mobster man, and she's with him, but she kind of loves Ryan Gosling. He looks kind of nice. It is kind of a side story here, but one of the better parts of the film. Still, it's cool to see that Emma Stone has a film like this under her filmography, but there are a lot of better options, if you ask me. Neil? Veronica? Um... Not sure why I watched this, to be honest. It's like three minutes long and she barely has lines, so yeah, not gonna rank this one either. Hi, fire. <laughs>
Voiceover time. I, I mean, I guess there's Marmaduke. Animated time. The Croods was always a movie I knew existed, but never got around to it since it seemed to be one of the other DreamWorks movies. Honestly, not that bad though. Emma Stone is joined in this one by Nick Cage and Ryan Reynolds, sparking, that's right, their second project since Paper Man. We got some cave people, right? The Croods, if you will. They've only survived because Papa Crude, played by Cage, has a very strict rules, but eventually Daughter Crude, played by Emma Stone gets that longing for adventure and Ryan Reynolds guy that's his name is gonna help her I think a huge part of this movie working is because of the performances Nick Cage and Emma Stone being the two standouts and I'm not just gonna say that for every movie because this is an Emma Stone video she's genuinely the standout in a lot of these films they play this dynamic so well the overprotective father and the rebellious daughter and it's this relationship that sells the movie it's one of Stone's only animated films and while some actors don't always make the best transition to the medium of course Big shock, Emma Stone's great. She can play human, she can play cartoon, she can play dog. Talk about range. What makes life valuable is that it doesn't last forever. What makes it precious is that it ends. A lot of what I'm gonna say about this movie, I already said in my Andrew Garfield filmography, but it gets way too much hate. It's really not that bad. It has the best part of the first film in Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone, the best relationship, the best chemistry, I'm gonna say it again, in any superhero film ever. The film looks awesome. You know, I still see people posting the swinging montages to X. We're never gonna get anything like this. Those swinging scenes, they look terrific. Just the CGI in general is awesome. But the most important thing about this film is that it has substance. It focuses so much on this relationship between Peter and Gwen and the aftermath of his promise to Captain Stacy from the first film. It has flaws Yes, but it's better than so many of the modern superhero movies that we're getting because it feels like the filmmakers actually wanted to make it. They wanted to explore and further these characters, and I think they accomplished that. And that's shown in just how devastating the loss of Gwen is. It hurts. It's torture because she's such a great character. We know how much Peter loves her. It's all because of how good these performances are. This movie gets way too much hate. It has problems, some of them big, but the good far outweighs the bad. Revisit this one if you haven't in a while. I guarantee you, you'll like it more than you did before. You'd be happier if I was a fraud because then your whole fixed worldview wouldn't be shaken up. No, it's quite the opposite. Want to get this out of the way right away? Made, movies made by Woody Allen. Guy's controversial. Some people don't like him. I'm not too well informed. I'm not going to talk about that. Let's just talk about the movie. The premise of this film is actually kind of interesting. Colin Firth travels around debunking mediums who try to scam people by saying they can communicate with the loved ones. Oh, uh, your loved one's in a room. I can smell them in the candles. Some random thing like that. They can see the future, blah, blah, blah. Emma Stone is the next medium in question. But when it's time to debunk her, he has a pretty hard time. Maybe. Get this, magic's real. Light spoilers for the film. Not that you're gonna watch it. This is kind of a different role for Emma Stone because of the fact her character is putting on some sort of show the whole time. She's playing a character who's playing a character who's playing a character. It's got layers, just like an ogre. Here's what I'll say. The main two performances are good, and this weird kind of like relationship they have is pretty interesting. Like Spider-Man 2, there are parts of the movie that don't work. Some parts I didn't enjoy, I didn't buy it, but with a really low score on Rotten Tomatoes, I was expecting a lot worse. Not one of the more memorable films of her career, not one that you have to watch or that I'd even recommend, but I didn't hate my time with it. It was kind of just like, okay. You're scared to death, like the rest of us, that you don't matter. And you know what? You're right. You don't. Holy crap, this movie is insane. The film follows a washed up actor played by Michael Keaton, who's really only known for this one comic book role he did in the past, and now he's fighting for relevancy in a dramatic role as he pursues the theater. The film has so many crazy characters, including Birdman's distant daughter, played by Emma Stone. It's one of those films that doesn't seem to have a weak point, you know? The performances are all amazing, and on a technical level, it might be even more impressive. It's filmed to look like multiple extended oneers and that is executed perfectly. Riggins' story is one of relevance, closure, humanity, and I must say that it's one of, if not Michael Keaton's, best performances. One of the best things about the film is this father-daughter relationship showing what's not always positive. Sure, they love each other at the end of the day, but we see conveyed in this film what led Riggins to maybe not be 
a great dad and the aftermath of what that cost. Emma Stone is always tremendous in this film and I just love this character in general. She's a great reflection of Regan who's more optimistic about this career revival because Sam doesn't look at her dad's show quite so fondly. The film is amazing and in my opinion, justifiably, it won Best Picture at the Oscars, also landing nominations for the big three performances in Keaton, Norton, and you guessed it, Emma Stone. It's also really interesting because I think this is a big career moment for Emma Stone. Sure, it was apparent, very apparent. She's really talented. We see that in films like Paper Man, The Help, even Spider-Man, but I still think that she was slept on until this point. In the other two filmographies I've watched in Andrew Garfield and Margot Robbie, they both have this moment where it's like, okay, Hey, holy shit, the whole world knows. For Andrew Garfield, it's a little earlier on in Social Network, but for Margot Robbie, it's a little later like Emma Stone in I, Tonya. Especially starring in some big comedy films like Easy A, I think this was the big turning point. A lot of people, you know, the masses, saw Emma Stone as the legit talent that she is. Not only can she act in a Best Picture winner, but she could deliver one of the best performances in a film alongside Michael Keaton, who's giving one of his his best performances, a very special actor. Big moment in her career, and we see that upswing in some of the films ahead. You told me not to. No, 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 no. That might be the worst part, is I believed you and you told me no, not to. No, 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 no. Well, maybe not right away. <laughs> not that Emma Stone's bad in this movie, it's just kind of a weird film, and it also got some backlash because Emma Stone was cast as a Hawaiian, and she's not Hawaiian. But even with a solid cast, this one's just not that memorable. Bradley Cooper goes to Hawaii, and Emma Stone has to watch him, and he's like, ew, gross, she's wearing a hat? No thank you, Rachel McAdams is here too, uh, I like her. But then Emma Stone character puts her hair down and maybe she's beautiful. John Krasinski's here, Emma Stone's collecting office members like Infinity Stones at this point, nuclear warheads, they're also here. I'm just kidding, they're not like nukes, but, but it feels like it. 20% on Rotten Tomatoes, too low, the cast is good, Emma Stone's here and that's awesome. But just like I said, kind of forgettable, you can skip this one. Usually the students are merely paraphrasing what they've read, but I found you thinking fresh and well presented. First off, on paper, Emma Stone and Joaquin Phoenix is an automatic slam dunk. I'm talking Prime, Shaq, and Kobe. I'm so excited we get to see them team up again in Ari Aster's next film, Eddington, because unfortunately, this one I think missed the mark. Two things to get out of the way. One, it's Woody Allen again, he's back. So hold that against the film if you want. I'm not gonna be talking about it. And two, the performances here are good. They're awesome. How could they not be? In this one, long story short, student and teacher say, hey, that man's irrational, let's kill him. But wait, maybe uh, this man's irrational. The student teacher romance, again, some people might say it's weird. It works for the most part because of how good these performances are. It's labeled as a mystery comedy, but I don't think it really pulls off either. Kind of just a decent to okay story with two really good performances. It has some high highs for sure, but I don't think it capitalized off of its best assets. I know what you're thinking. Oh, uh, what the heck? Two forgettable movies in a row? You just said she was on the upswing. Well, don't worry. We're done with that now. From here on out, not a single bad film. You got that to look forward to. But it's like a pipe dream for me, you know? And then you you said it. You, you change your dreams and then you grow up. This movie is... It's great. I actually didn't see Whiplash until after this one. So this was really my introduction to Damien Chazelle. And there's just so many things to love about the guy. He's genuinely a tremendous director. I love how he frames and blocks out his scenes. And from a production standpoint, the film is near flawless. The score is already a modern day classic. The cinematography, the editing, the songs, it's just such a treat, almost like a kid in a candy store. I adore the whole production, the whole aesthetic of this film. The film follows a couple, Mia and Sebastian, and their journey to make it in the Hollywood business, one as an actress and one as a musician. And this right here, Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling in this swan song of their three film dynamic duo, it's magic. They both got Oscar nominations, and rightfully so. They're both so good at expressing all of the hope, 
loss, excitement, fear in these characters, but also for just people trying to make it in a extremely tough and competitive business. Really our first introduction to Emma Stone singing, and she's amazing. How is she this talented? It doesn't seem fair. It's also a great companion piece to Whiplash and the price of pursuing your dreams. It really works as a one-two punch. I love the ending to death. I don't care what anyone says. Also, do you want to hear an absolute insane stat? Not including her animated roles, from Birdman on, Emma Stone never goes more than three movies without getting either nominated or winning an Oscar. She goes Birdman, La La Land, The Favorite, Poor Things, not to mention all the Golden Globes, like two of them in between. That's insane. Also, she got an Oscar for Best Actress in this movie, and she 100% deserved it. Good job, Emma Stone. The day you lost him. Yes. Each one that dies, a little bit of you goes with them. Salt, burr, oh, I mean, I mean, Game of Thrones. The Favorite marks the first of many Emma Stone and Yorgos Lanthimos collaborations. The film follows Abigail and Sarah, two girls fighting for the favor of Queen Anne, thus granting them vicarious power and status. We all want that. If you're into Game of Thrones style power grab, stories and stuff like that, and betrayal, this movie is right up your alley, let me tell you. The three main performances are all incredible, even getting Olivia Colman an Oscar. The reason I like this role for Emma Stone though is because it feels different. It feels almost morally gray. When the film starts, we're rooting for the down on her luck Abigail and against the arrogant Sarah, but watching as this movie blurs the lines of, okay, who's the good guy? The character who's our favorite is always fluctuating. Loyalty, betrayal, and the sincerity of those close to us. I think all of those are explored incredibly well here. It's a pretty good movie, and while it's not one of my absolute favorites in Emma Stone's filmography, there's no denying just how good this one is. Also, it got her her second Oscar nomination, so that's cool. Boys rule, girls drool. I bet you'll never guess who stars in this one. Steve Carell. Their second collaboration, Bobby Riggs, an ex-tennis champ, and he's getting older, but he still says, listen, I can beat any girl in the world because they're girl and I'm not girl. Billie Jean King, played by Emma Stone, says, oh yeah, buddy, oh yeah, old man, bring it on. And now they're going to play each other. This is pretty good. Again, the two lead performances are great, and the story in general is pretty interesting. Billie Jean King is a super interesting character character as is Bobby Riggs, and when you need two characters to work for the film to succeed, it's a big help when they're written and acted so well. On top of that, it's just nice to have a sports movie under Emma Stone's belt, you know? And the build up to the final match makes the whole entire film engaging. Sure, it's history, so you probably can deduce who's gonna win, but that doesn't make any of the matches any less interesting. Going into the personal lives of these characters is also a highlight, seeing the highs and lows of both of these people's inner workings behind the scenes of the tennis. Emma Stone also got nominated for a Golden Globe for this. Good job, hooray. We're not done. You called me a cave girl, but you, you, you are? Ah, The Croods 2. This is actually a pretty good sequel, let me tell you. It takes the world, characters, and concepts of the first film and expands them to make, in my opinion, a much better film than the first. We get some new characters, Peter Dinklage, always a win, and also some more growth for the Crude family. Emma Stone once again plays daughter Crude, who isn't as much the main, main character this time around, but that's fine because it gets the whole family some more screen time. They do what a good sequel should do, and that's expand the characters' arcs, as well as relationships with new and old characters. This one highlighting Eep's relationship with Guy, as well as newcomer Don. Nick Cage as Grud is always the best part Part of the movie just saying though him and Dinklage are elite good movie good sequel oh and Emma Stone I bet you're wondering what happened to her well she's still a beast she's still acting really well amazing regardless of medium it's really spent a lot of time together huh <laughs> sweet you're cute together I like it now sequel time emma stone went from having one sequel under her belt to doing two back to back starting with this one the very long awaited follow-up to zombie land zombie land double tap this is a movie that you could say it doesn't have to exist but the world's better with it you know it's just a very solid sequel to the first film that gives us more of what we love funny and interesting characters in a comedy centered world of zombies that's about it the movie sidelines 
headlines Little Rock, one of the group's four members, and honestly, it's fine because she's the least memorable of the group, and they replaced her with Rosario Dawson, who's pretty good. And in my opinion, the highlight of the film Madison, played by Zoe Deutsch. Emma Stone once again plays Wichita, go figure, who's thrown into this love triangle with Columbus and Madison, later in the film actually getting some pretty heartfelt moments with Columbus and always Little Rock. Yeah, don't really have too much else to say about this one. It doesn't reinvent the wheel, but it keeps it rolling, and sometimes that's all you need. And I kind of like the idea of getting a sequel to this every 10 years. That sounds pretty fun. I'm really down for that. Brilliant. Born fast. And a little bit mad. It's nice to see that so late in her career, we can still have movies where they just go, it's Emma Stone, let her cook. And that's definitely what happens here. Not to say the other members are bad, far from it. I mean, we got one of my favorite rising talents in Paul Walter Hauser in this thing, so that's a dub. But Emma Stone is on screen for probably every scene of this movie, and it's because she's so damn good, I really like this one. It is kind of a weird prequel that doesn't set up Corella to be a villain, even though she's so clear a villain in every other form of media, but that's prequels, I guess, these days, right? Going back to Stone's performance, in this, I like watching this transformation from the quieter and reserved Estella to the more confident and bold Cruella. I imagine it's not easy to make this change feel seamless, but she pulls it off really well. Also, pretty great seeing her in a more aggressive character. I always like when actors switch up the types of characters they're playing. Also, got her another Golden Globe nomination. She's just banging them out now. And we have made it to the end, the film that got Miss Stone her second Best Actress win. The film marks her second collaboration with Yorgos Lanthimos after The Favorite, and here we see the story of Bella Baxter, an unborn child's brain put into the body of her mother after she commits on aliving. The movie might be a bit too much at a first viewing, but the more you sit with it, just the better it becomes. I think watching this person grow and learn the joys and horrors of the world is kind of this beautiful meditation on life and humanity. How beautiful life can be, but in order to see those moments, we also have to explore humanity's darker qualities and aspects. This is, in my opinion, the pinnacle of Emma Stone's acting, as it is so technically insane, I could make a whole analysis on every scene and just how insane her performance is. Every single scene she changes, sometimes small, sometimes unnoticeable, but at the end, we're not sure when, but we can look back and say this Bella is different from the girl we met in the beginning. Maturing the character ever so slightly takes so much skill, and I give all the credit to Emma Stone and the direction of Lanthimos. Also, the score is awesome, the set design, the costumes. The only other film of her filmography to challenge Damien Chazelle's La La Land on a production level, in my opinion. Mark Ruffalo is also awesome and hilarious in this film. Willem Dafoe, always a W. I really like this movie, as crazy as it can get, but once you get through it and you can see the whole picture, it makes it so much easier to appreciate. A lot of times we see people say comedy actors also can be some of the best dramatic ones, with the best examples being Robin Williams and Jim Carrey, but I think Emma Stone is also another great example of that. Sure, she doesn't do stand-up comedy, but of her 27 films, I'd say there's only a rare few that don't focus on comedy. Magic and Moonlight, Birdman, Irrational Man, but really, they're there's a ton of comedy. Even films that aren't comedy still are incredibly funny, like Spider-Man and Poor Things. Not only is she an incredible comedic actor, but she might even be better in the drama department. And that's because she doesn't really specialize in one kind of acting. She's just a really good actor, regardless of what the genre or tone asks of her. I do think up until Birdman, people saw her mainly as a comedic actor, but we even see hints of that drama genius as early as Paper Man, where she legit has some amazing moments in only her fifth film. The first of which, she's the real lead. There is so much range here, I don't think anyone should ever doubt her at this point. I mean, why would they when she's won two Best Actress Oscars? While not all of these films are great, she always is. And really, I think she's one of the most versatile actors we have working right now. Every time she drops a performance, we should be excited. So many movies elevated just because she's there. Comedy, drama, musical, it doesn't matter. She captures everyone's attention when she's on screen. All right, so here's my final rankings of all of her films, and then I'll rank her performances. In last is Marmaduke. This is the only, I'd say, 
uh, bad movie of the group. Then we enter into the kind of forgettable group of Aloha, Irrational Man, Ghost of Girlfriends Past, Magic and Moonlight. All of these ones are kind of interchangeable. And then we have films that you could watch, you don't have to. The Rocker, Gangster Squad, The Croods, House Bunny. And then the decent ones, I'm talking Paper Man, and then Amazing Spider-Man 2, and then The Croods 2, and then Corella, and then Zombieland 2. And then from there we have the batch of the good films. Easy A, Battle of the Sexes, and then The Help, and then Zombieland, The Favorite, Crazy Stupid Love, The Amazing Spider-Man, and the best of the best, Poor Things, and then at three, I'm going super bad, and then at two, La La Land, and I know it's controversial, some people don't like this movie for some reason. In first, I have Birdman, I just love that film. And here's how I'd rank her performances, but keep in mind, they're all good. And you can see sometimes she's really good in lesser movies because it's all over the place. In last, I have Marmaduke, again, um, it's a dog, hard to emote, hard to get connected. And then we have The Rocker, Super Bad, House Bunny film, she's not even in it that much. Ghost of Girlfriends Past, and then Aloha. And then Zombieland and Zombieland Double Tap, kind of interchangeable, it's the same character. Gangster Squad, and then at 16 I have The Croods 2, and then The Croods 1, and then Crazy Stupid Love. 13 is Irrational Man, 12 is Magic and Moonlight, 11 is Easy A, and here's my top 10. In 10, I have The Help, followed by Battle of the Sexes, and then at 8, surprisingly, I have Paper Man, or 5th film. 6, I have Corella. I actually think she's better in Spider-Man 2 at 5, and then I have The Favorite, and then I have Birdman, and then I have, surprise, surprise, her two big wins. La La Land at 2, and Poor Things at 1, her best performance. When people say, oh, these actors are the future of Hollywood, people don't really mention Emma Stone. They talk about, like, you know, Timmy and Florence Pugh and Austin Butler, don't get me wrong, they're amazing. Emma Stone's only three years older than Austin Butler. It is insane the career she's had so far, and we need to appreciate her. Truly one of the best working young actors. She's the future, people. By the time she's done, I'm gonna say it, she'll be one of the best actors of all time. Let me prove it. Katherine Hepburn has the most Oscars of any actor of all time at four. Emma Stone is halfway there. Again, she's only 35. Only 45 actors have two or more Oscars, and she's the youngest on the list. Her acting is only getting better with every film, and she solidified herself as if she's in the movie, we should go and see. A generational talent. If you haven't bought into the hype, now's the time. Check out some of these movies. I had so much fun doing this video. Let me know what actor I should do next. I already did Andrew Garfield, Margot Robbie. Check those out. Obviously, these take a ton of time to watch all the movies and then edit this long ass video. I would really appreciate if you did all this stuff. Share it with a friend. I'd really appreciate that. If you watch any of these movies, let me know in the comments what you think. I'm curious to see. Thanks for watching. Emma Stone, you're the best.